I'm NBC Connecticut meteorologist Rochelle J. Here's an update on Hurricane Lee as of about 2.30 on September 12, 2023. For our friends in Connecticut, we're not expecting a direct hit from Hurricane Lee. We're looking at more so fringe impacts, so talking about wind and rain. Still nailing down some of those details, but again, it looks like more of those impacts, more significant impacts will be for our neighbors to the east, heading back towards eastern Massachusetts, as well as the Cape and Islands. We're keeping an eye on the trends just in case the system wants to shift a little bit farther west, a little bit closer to that New England coastline. So here's a look at the high rise satellite of Hurricane Lee. This is the past six hour loop. You can see that decently well defined eye, but also I want you to note just how massive this storm is. It is hundreds of miles across from north to south and then also from east to west. So when we look at the track, when we're looking at the cone, remember that's only showing you the center of the storm and not so much how large the actual storm is. So I want to zoom out and you can see the center of the storm is about 400 miles north of Puerto Rico and just about 800 miles off of the southern tip of the Florida mainland. So this storm is well away from um, land right now and that is good news and it'll continue to stay away from land over the next few days. So the worst of the impact just impacting open waters. So here's a look at something that's called wind shear. This shows you the difference in wind direction or speed as you go higher up in the atmosphere. I just superimposed the radar image of Lee on top of that. So it is bumping up into some unfavorable conditions. The shading here that I have here is just showing you where some of those unfavorable amounts of wind shear are relative to the storm itself. So it is bumping up against it as it's continuing to push off to the west northwest but the storm is still pretty strong. This is something that's called heat potential. This, so this is showing you how much available heat is available below the surface. So sometimes we'll talk about sea surface temperatures. So this is showing you, here's Lee right here. So it's churning up some of those waters, bringing up some of those cooler waters up to the surface. But as it continues to push closer to the Bahamas and Turks and Caicos, it's not gonna reach those islands, but there is some available heat well below the surface that it can feed on. So once again, just superimposing Lee on top of that image here. So switch things over to the sea surface temperatures. With these, you need them to be at or above 80 degrees Fahrenheit. And you're seeing here's about where Lee is right here. As it pushes off to the west, it continues to have those water temperatures in the mid to possibly upper 80. So a lot of fuel for it to feed on, but not so much as you head a little bit farther down. And of course, we have that shear, which tropical systems don't like. They kind of tear them apart just a bit. So as the system moves north, I want you to notice how we go from some of those deeper reds into some of these cooler greens and eventual blues as it heads closer to uh, New England. So that means cooler air. We're expecting the system to weaken as it continues to push northward. Switching things over here. So this is the departure from normal for sea surface temperatures. You can see some of these blue colors that's upwelling. So again, bringing some of that cooler air from lower uh, under the water to the surface. So that brought some of that up from some uh, earlier storms that moved through, but we're still running above average in the path that we're expecting lead to move for the most part. There are a couple of areas where we do have some of those cooler than average waters, but for the most part, still running well above average for some of those sea surface temperatures as we've seen going through much of the hurricane season so far. So here's a look at wave height. In parts of Lee, closer to that eye, we have some of those wave heights at 30, 40 feet. So let's look ahead along the eastern coastline at where some of these wave heights could be over the next few days. I want to stop it here at 8 o'clock on Thursday. Folks might be getting ready for the weekend down into the Carolinas, maybe heading to the Outer Banks. You can see some of these potential wave heights of over a foot and likely maybe a couple of feet for some of those wave heights. Now, now, for the surfers, they might think that's great, but that's not really the best thing to go out into the water with. And this is going to continue to push northward, stopping it here Friday evening up towards Long Island, the Cape and Islands, maybe areas of the Rhode Island uh, coastline. We'll have to watch some of those wave heights over half a foot, upwards to a foot, not too far off from shore. So again, we've got to have these serious wave heights as we head through the rest of the week and eventually pushing into Maine, areas of eastern Canada. 
you're seeing some of those higher wave heights during the weekend and maybe even for a prolonged period of time dealing with that as the system continues to push northward. So looking at the rip current risk for today through areas of uh, New England rather into Long Island as well. It's a moderate risk, but when I zoom out and head down to the south, you can see from Jersey down through the Del Mar with the Carolinas pretty much high risk for rip currents and it's the same story as we head down toward Florida, though southern Florida down toward Miami, a moderate risk of rip currents, but these rip current risks into that moderate, mostly high levels is going to stay that way as we go through much of the rest of the week as the lead continues to push off to the north. So something to keep in mind as you're planning maybe your beach trip or your weekend along the eastern coastline. So here's a look at Hurricane Lee, 115 mile an hour category three storm. Now this thing is crawling at six miles an hour. It has significantly slowed down. So the center of this is not going to move very much over the next day or so. Eventually we are anticipating the system to speed up. Right now, there is a tropical storm watch in place for Bermuda as the system is expected to pass by there, but not the direct impacts of a landfall. But again, some of those fringe impacts that we could see for most of uh, areas of New England. Let's zoom into New England here. You can see the cone again only encompasses predicted areas of where the center of the storm can be. So let's say this is going to be right in the middle. Hundreds of miles away, you could still feel impacts from that storm. So I don't want you to say we're not in the cone. I don't need to worry. That's not so much the case. It still could impact your local weather. I mentioned too, as it moves northward, it's going into cooler waters. It's not going to have that cooler water to feed off of. So it is going to weaken. And of course, it will weaken once it makes landfall, wherever it does make landfall. That is still to be determined. So here's a look at the spaghetti plots again, plotting potential locations of the center. Now, while most of this cluster is back off to the east, there are still a few outliers that are trying to bring the center of Lee a little bit closer to areas of that southern. New England coastline. So that's why we're still keeping an eye on things just to see how far west Lee wants to go for our uh, neighbors here in Connecticut. So odds of tropical storm force winds going through the next few days toward late week and into the weekend. It's low for us here, but still worth watching because you do see upwards of 20% for Nantucket. So here's a look at a comparison between the GFS and the European models. They are pretty much on par with each other. The Euro is a little bit faster, but they are pretty well in line. And we still have to keep an eye on it because you did see one of those models pushing again a little bit farther back off to the west. So it's close enough for us to continue to monitor it and continue to nail down our details here in southern New England. So that's Hurricane Lee. We also have Hurricane Margo out in the Atlantic as well. This is a category one storm with 85 mile an hour winds moving faster than Lee at 12 miles an hour. But thankfully, Margo is going to just be out there. It's going to be an issue for the fish. It's going to move off to the north, eventually losing strength as we head toward the weekend, but not directly impacting any land. So right now we mentioned Lee, we mentioned Margo, but we also have another system that we will need to keep an eye out for. So that's called Invest 97 and 98L that has a 70% chance within the next seven days of becoming at least a tropical depression. So the reason we have 97 and 98 is because one of those systems are going to combine and one of them is kind of going to take over. And we'll have to watch it because look how this area moves. It moves off to the north and west. So that's the projected trajectory of what will eventually likely become a tropical depression in the Atlantic. So, so far we've made it through the M name. The next storm name, if 97 slash 98 L gains a name, would be Nigel. And then we're heading into the final stretch of the names here on the hurricane season. So as far as September goes, where would you typically look to see some of those tropical development into areas of the Gulf of Mexico? You would also look a little bit south into the Western Caribbean Sea. And then also where we're seeing Lee, where we saw Margo, and where we could see whatever becomes of the 97, 98L situation. This wide area through of the uh, Central Atlantic and heading toward the southeastern coast of the United States. That's exactly kind of where we're watching Lee. So here's where we sit so far for the 2023 Atlantic hurricane season. We've had 14 named systems. 
five hurricanes and three major hurricanes. So we're keeping an eye on Lee. We'll keep an eye on what's brewing in the western Atlantic as well. But of course, stick with NBC Connecticut for updates throughout the hurricane season and also for your local forecast as well. I'm meteorologist Rochelle J. Thanks for watching.